good day. I was going to say good morning, but it's actually almost afternoon here. And who knows what time it is where you are. So good day. Happy holidays. It's December. It's getting crazy. If it's not crazy already, people are busy, but they're also, you in general or in particular, are probably thinking, what special things can I bake for the upcoming holidays? Well, I'm going to be making two videos today. This will be the first one. There will be another one later. And um, I'm super excited because one of these I just tried for the first time this week and I am over the moon. Today I'm going to be making an Italian Christmas bread. It's in a traditional, traditional Italian Christmas bread called Pandatone. <laughs> I promise I won't say it like that every time, but I will not say Panatoni either. Panatone. I'll take the middle. I have never even tasted it before I made it this week. I've told you before I have food allergies. I can't eat baked goods pretty much from anywhere unless I make it or a trusted friend or family member does. So I'd never even tasted it. Panettone is baked upright, vertical, in a paper mold. It has kind of a corrugated bottom and there's some kind of a coating on this. And I just found a little baked, you know, a little small cake pan. It's well-loved cake pan to just put it in for support. And so that's where the dough is going to go for its final rise after it comes out of dough cycle. So panettone, as I said, is a traditional Italian Christmas bread, not to say that you can't make it any other time of year. And it has lots of dried and candied fruit in it. You can make your own choices as to the dried fruit. Mine will have golden raisins, currants, craisins, which are those dried cranberries, and candied orange peel. Now the candied orange peel you have to either buy or make ahead of time. I bought some on Amazon, but I couldn't use it because it said may contain traces of nuts. So then I had to go and find a recipe and I found one by Jacques Pepin, who I'm sure many of you have heard of, and I will be linking you to that video to make the candied orange peel if you so desire. You don't have to, but I gotta tell you, it's really yummy. So we're going to start putting the ingredients in. I have some water. I'm not going to say the amounts because they will be in the recipe in the description. Vanilla. Beaten egg yolks. We will use the egg whites later, whoops. And um, you do want to scrape as much as you can of ingredients that are, you know, whatever you have measured them into. Um, I read something somewhere where they tested it, tested recipes where they scraped and didn't scrape and there was a difference. So I am trying to get all the last bits of yummy egg yolk in there. Let me just fill this with water before it becomes glue. All right. So that is all the wet ingredients. Water, egg yolks, vanilla. And now we have bread flour. And we have sugar. And we have salt. And we have yeast. Now I always use the SAF instant yeasts. There's a red label for most breads and there is a gold label for sweet breads. For this recipe, the gold label seems to work a little better. So all the ingredients are in, I hope. Let's double check, water, check, egg yolks, check, vanilla, Yes, bread flour, yes, sugar, yes, salt, yes. Oh, and the butter. I didn't even measure out the butter yet. I'm gonna get that measured and we'll be right back. All right, so I have the butter, salted butter, and I am just 
cutting it up a bit. Don't have to be too fussy about that. Um, if you have a bread machine that has a rest or preheat, you can put your butter in right out of the fridge as well as all your other ingredients. That's what my bread machine has, my Zojirushi. I don't have to warm my liquids. I don't have to soften my butter or anything like that. But if your bread machine does not have that, then you will have to follow your machine's instructions for putting in your ingredients. All right, so this is going to go into the bread machine and I will be giving you little updates along the way with in case I need to add more flour or in case, in case I need to add more liquid. You never know what you're gonna get. We had rain yesterday, so I'm assuming my weather is still humid. That may mean I'm going to be adding more flour. We shall see. So um, I'm gonna put this in and I'm gonna press the start button. It'll be about a half an hour, not that that matters to you, until my bread machine warms up and starts kneading. About five to six minutes into kneading is when we check to see if our dough is coming together and if it needs more flour or more liquid. Here's the fruit that I'm going to put into the panettone. You can actually choose whatever you like, but traditionally there are raisins and currants in. You don't have to follow tradition. I don't think anyone else may think about putting craisins in, but I have to put in what I can find that I'm not allergic to, so that's the problem. So we have craisins, which are dried cranberries, golden raisins, zante currants, any kind of currants, and then this is my candy orange peel. You can see that it has sugar all over it, and it has like a chewy texture, but I chop it up for this. Um, this was easy to make once I found that Jacques Papin recipe. Like I said, I will link to that. So here it is. It's all mixed together. And I'm actually going to put in a little bit of flour so it all doesn't stick to one another. <laughs> if you call these one another's, I'm going to put a little flour in here so all the fruit doesn't stick to each other. And... Um, Still waiting for the rest cycle to be done and the dough to be kneading. So it's been about five minutes since it started kneading. And this is a perfect example of dough that is what? Everybody say it together. Too wet. So I'm going to add about 20 grams. Well, I'm going to add about 10 grams of flour, but I'm pretty sure it will take more and I'll show you an update after I've added it and it has a chance to knead. Well, 10 grams was obviously not enough. I am thinking it's gonna be even more than 20, but you always do a little bit at a time. So that's what I will do next. Let's see if I can hold this and do it at the same time. Not easy. I had weighed out 20 grams and put in half the first time and now this is going to be the second time, so I'll get right back to you when this is done mixing, or as it mixes. We are getting closer, but it's going to need another 20 grams minimum, so that's what I have. So I'm keeping track. I've now officially added an extra 40 grams. I may just um, adjust the recipe. We are definitely getting closer. I'm going to feel the dough. Uh, it's not too sticky, but it's not quite coming together, and you can see there's stuff all around. So I'm going to give it another 10. I left my ta tablespoon over there, so I'm just going to do it not on camera. It's perfectly okay if you want to do a little scrape down. Just make sure you are using something like silicone that will not scratch your non-stick pan. Uh, as you can see, we're probably about there, but I think it could use just a little more flour. So I'm going to, boy, this is hard to do by myself. Um, that's about five more grams. So let's see what happens. So you can see there's a nice dough ball and it's not sticky. It's just a little tacky. 
everything is mostly clean. It's all in one ball. I think I am done adding flour. So I will adjust the recipe. Now that I've got the dough ball all set, I am just waiting for the add beep to go off and I will add all of the goodies. I think I may have made just a bit too much. <laughs> I think I maybe had about two thirds too much, but what I'm gonna do is add, you know, fistful at a time, see how it looks. And if I have too much, I will make another panettone tomorrow and use the rest of this, no biggie. So my ad beep is going. And what I'm going to do is take a fistful, uh, maybe two. <laughs> Put it in. Let it mix. And then I'm going to put another one in. Let it mix. This, this is supposed to have considerably more fruit in it than say a raisin bread, by the way. It's supposed to be like polka dotted with fruit. The fruit is a main ingredient. I have to turn off the camera to add the rest of these, but I will, you'll see the dough eventually. I don't want to open the lid again, but I think you can see that um, the fruit is mixing in. It has some kneading left to go, so it will get, should get pretty thoroughly uh, mixed in. It's amazing, you know, I'm actually sometimes so shocked at how uh, strong this machine is to mix all of that stuff in, but this is my, I don't know, third or fourth time making this and it definitely works. And you see how much fruit is in there, it's supposed to look like that. It's just finished kneading. I'm sorry about that glare. I don't know what to do about that, but anyway, you should be able to see that it says rise and um, it's about 12 noon now, so it's gonna be, ready to come out of the bread machine and rise, be form shaped and rise the third, the second time. Oh, I can't talk this morning, <laughs> um, in about an hour. So here's our panettone dough. Came out of the bread maker pretty much looking like that. I just, pat, pat. <laughs> and I just have to put it in the mold without ripping it. Bring it over here, sorry. And uh, we're just now going to put it into rise for the last time. You can send for these molds on Amazon and I'll link you. You can also supposedly use a brown paper bag with approximately that measurement. And the measurement was 4.8 high by 675, 6.75, six and three quarters inches across. So there it is. Let's go put it in to rise. Just in case you haven't watched my other videos, this is how I set the rise. Pardon me, the messy oven. I just want to make sure this is, the shelf is low. So what I do, I, I have an older oven, so it doesn't have a proof um, setting. If I had a proof setting, I would use that. But I'm going to just do this. Upper oven, 170, which is my lowest temperature. Set start, set it for one minute, and one minute only. Any more than a minute will be too hot, will kill your yeast, your bread won't rise properly, or it'll over-rise in a hurry and then go splat. You don't want to do that. So I set a timer for one minute, and you're going to see, I can put this down, 
you're going to see that at the end of the minute, what do I do? I turn the oven off. Why do I set a timer? Because I'm 64 and a half years old and I forget. <laughs> you must set a timer. The phone can ring, someone comes to the door, your kids come running into the kitchen, you forget, the oven heats for too long, and then you'd have to, you can let it rise on the counter if your kitchen is warm, I suppose. I never do that. So we have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Set, cancel the timer, turn the oven off. This reminds me, my husband and I always do this, if you remember the movie Young Frankenstein, put the candle back. <laughs> so this is turn the oven off. One minute only. Do not leave the oven on and do not let it get to 170. You are only heating it up just a little bit. It just feels like you would walk out onto a warm summer day. I'm going to set the timer for 40 minutes. to let it rise. Now, again, I'm going to say, you set it for 170. You set a timer for one minute. Turn the oven off, turn the timer off after one minute. Do not leave the oven on. Do not forget to set a timer. How many times I'm going to say this to you? I can't tell you the number of people who have written me on Facebook Messenger or whatever and said, I forgot to set the timer and my oven was too hot. Don't do it. <laughs> Okay, enough lecturing. This is going to rise and I will show you when it's done rising. We will spread it with a topping that I'll show you and we'll bake it. Yay! So here's the panettone all risen. You can see that the fruit plays a huge role in this particular type of bread. And I meant to mention earlier that it's not a bread and it's not a cake. It's a cakey bread or a bready cake. Um, if any of you have ever eaten challah or any type of egg bread, it's kind of like that, but a little cakier, but still should be light, light in texture. Um, it, it's not something that you want to eat like sliced thin um, and put butter on like a toast like for breakfast. If you ate it, you would more likely just cut a wedge and it's going to be very tall, a, a wedge and just eat it. Kind of like a not so sweet cake, not something you'd want to put frosting on either. It's kind of in between. So the topping, instead of the usual egg wash, is just egg white. And this was reserved from when I put the four egg yolks in a little earlier. So I'm just doing egg white. And this is Swedish pearl sugar. I bought it on Amazon. I will try to link you to this as well. You don't have to have this, but I had the idea to use it because it looks pretty. These don't usually melt in, so they stay like this and they're, you know, they're crunchy and I don't know, I just think it looks really pretty. And because I am the queen of more is more or the queen of gilding the lily, since I had some of the fruit that went inside left over, I see no reason not to <laughs> add a few more pieces on top. I'm not going to cover it like a blanket of it and I'm gonna use more of the orange, I think. And it's falling off. The candied orange peel is just too good to waste and we can't kind of eat from this bowl because it's been mixed with uncooked flour and you don't want to eat uncooked flour. So this will go into bake. You start it out by baking it for 30 minutes on 350 degrees. 
And then you turn it, the oven down to 325 and you cook it for another 20 to 30 minutes until a skewer comes out clean. So I think I'm about done. I didn't have to get any currants on there, so I'm doing that. Equal opportunity fruit adder. <laughs> and I'm gonna bake it, and I'll show you when it's done baking. Manatone is done. And if this doesn't make a dramatic entrance for your holiday celebration, I don't know what would. Trumpets, please. Do -do -do -do. Wow. Look at that gorgeousness. Isn't that cool? I love this. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put it over here on the hot pad. Ah, I, I am just, I marvel at this. Somebody's getting a 360 there. <laughs> I am going to get a rack ready for cooling. And I'm going to lift not going to take the paper off quite yet. I'm going to lift this out. Oops. Ta-da. And in a few minutes, when it's sat for a bit, I will take the paper off of the panettone. And then later on, when it's cooled down, I will cut it open and you can see all the yummy gloriousness inside. In case you wondered how I took it out of the paper, I don't. I just kind of tear. <laughs> All right, I can't do this while holding the, the camera. I tore the paper off and you know, some stuck, it's not terrible, but next time I think I will spray the inside of the paper. But the bread didn't really suffer too much. It's not a big deal. It still looks absolutely gorgeous. It's time for some Panettone magic. I'm just going to cut it in half. Are you ready for the big reveal? Oh yeah. Look at that. Now you understand why I said the fruit is really the star. Right? And I will taste a little teeny wedge like this. Look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but I get a kick out of seeing the stretchy, squishy, pillowy yumminess. Mm. Oh, mm. these Italians know what they're talking about. <laughs> Pandatone, easily made in the bread machine. A little prep work on the candied orange peel, but that's your choice, you can buy it. But the but the Jacques Pepin method is super quick and easy. This is a winner, yum, yum, yum.